Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a different kind of video. We're going to be reviewing the new Harry Potter Magical Treasury, a visual guide to the Wizarding World. This is a new Lego book which retails for anywhere from $19 to $21. I found mine for $19 on Amazon. You can also buy it at uh, Target and I believe Barnes & Noble. This book came with an exclusive Tom Riddle minifigure, which we'll take a closer look at right now. This book comes with an exclusive Tom Riddle minifigure. He is very, very impressive. I love the detailing on his clothes. This is actually the first time we've gotten this minifigure since I believe it was 2002. Here he is right now. This is the original Tom Riddle. It's definitely improved drastically since then. I'll do a comparison on those minifigures in just a second. Taking a look at this guy, he has no alternate facial printing. He's got a little hood printing on the back. His hairpiece is the same as Cedric's, but looks pretty good for his character. He's got very nice leg printing, which fl uh, matches up perfectly with his robes. He's got the green Slytherin tie. He's got a, like a trench coat with a vest underneath with the black shirt. Overall, very, very good printing. He's got the black wand. And then moving him over, taking a look at the original Tom Riddle minifigure, the wand is atrocious. It was just a, you know, a stick, a pole, not very good. His hair was the same as Harry Potter's, did not fit his character. I wasn't a fan of his face, and it got that a little better. I do like his sweatshirt here, though. It's very similar. You can see the Gryffindor tie and the collared bit. They just changed it from gray to black. Back then, all the Harry Potter minifigures had capes, so he still has the stars and moons cape right here. This was a decent minifigure when it came out, but it's crazy to think that these are the same character. They've improved so, so much since 2002. It's also funny to think we've only ever gotten two iterations of this character. But that's about all I have to say for this exclusive character. Definitely worth getting the book for him. Fantastic character. We'll make sure your Harry Potter collection looks very impressive. That's all I got for you. So let's move back and take a look at the book itself. Now that we've taken a look at that minifigure, let's move on to the book itself. Now there are several inaccuracies in this book and I'll do my best to point them out to you. But just keep in mind, they're very minor and they don't detract from the overall value of the book. Without further ado, let's take a look. Opening it up, you can see it's got the new Hogwarts, I say new, the uh, giant Hogwarts castle. I think this makes a very nice display piece and it was a good choice to have for the cover, for the inside cover. Moving on, there's a picture of Harry with some little notes about him here. The Hogwarts castle, this time colorized. Then here we got the table of contents. There's a lot of cool bits of information here. And they have a picture of the Hogwarts Express open so you can see the inside. Moving on, we got the introduction. I'll pause for a second here so anyone who wants to can read it. Moving on, when they picture different sets in this book, or different parts of sets, they have this little box right here. It tells you the, uh, the name of the set, the year it came out, the set number, the piece count, and the minifigure count. It's really, uh, it's really interesting, and it's good to keep track of what sets are what. The first section of the book is going to be Magical Students. There's a page here devoted to Harry Potter. It's got some cool informations. Uh, there's a, these appear throughout the book, the little brick facts. They're cool, interesting tidbits. Uh, there's nothing too much to note here, so I'll move on. The next, the next page is Privet Drive. You got some information about the Dursleys, and then a picture of the house itself. Some information about that. Another brick facts down here. The next page is Harry at Hogwarts. This is all the uh, pictures of Harry Potter when he's at Hogwarts instead of uh, the train station or at home. Got some interesting things here and there. Pretty cool. Uh, this brick fact is actually pretty interesting. The broom piece has not been changed since it was produced for Fabuland way back when. I find that kind of interesting. Moving on, we got Ron Weasley. There's another brick facts down here. Some general information about Ron, nothing too, uh, nothing too important. Then we get perhaps one of my favorite new sets. I can't wait to get a hold of this one to review, but it's the Burrow. We got information about the other Weasleys right here, and then some general information about the Burrow itself. There's another one of those boxes that tells you what sets are what. Moving on, we got Hermione's page. There's a bit about the advent calendar here, a brick facts about her Patronus, and just some general information. Moving on, we get to platform nine, nine and three quarters. There's a cool brick facts in the corner down here. Some general information about the trolley witch and just the train itself. Then we get some other random Hogwarts students. There should, there's a little problem I have here. This book has all the sets that released from 2018 up to 2020, except for this set right here. They don't include the accessory set, which is, in my opinion, a little disappointing. Those figures would fit in right here, so I figured it'd be uh, perfect to mention it. There's a index in the back that has a picture of all the Harry Potter minifigures. Those four characters are not pictured. Just found that a little disappointing. Here though, we just got a picture of some of the characters. Moving on, they have the Quidditch set right here. Just a bunch of information generally about Quidditch. And then a little more brick facts up here, nothing too important. 
We get Quidditch players. This is all the players except for Harry. We have Madam Hooch from the exclusive October pack. And that sums it up for that section. Next, we're going to be moving on to the Hogwarts staff. We have a huge section here about the Hogwarts castle, some general information about the set and the exterior, some of the micro figures. Moving on, it talks about the Hogwarts founders. The Basilisk is down here too. And they have the little brick facts for what set the, uh, the Basilisk came in, Hogwarts Castle. General information about the Hogwarts banners. Moving on, they talk about the Great Hall here, some more brick facts, and some information about the set itself and the Sorting Hat. Now, this, moving on, we come to this page right here for Albus Dumbledore. Now, I do have a big problem with this. This is when the first error comes into play. This wand right here is black. Dumbledore should have his tan wand right here. You can see that over here and over here. I don't know why they gave him a black wand here. Doesn't fit with this character and doesn't fit with the continuity, but it's a pretty glaring error because it's a huge picture. Other than that, there's some nice interesting facts about the Dumbledore character. There is a weird tidbit of information down here. It talks about his pensieve. It says the blue swirls matches embroidered blue, uh, blue robes. I don't really see the swirls in the pensieve matching his robes. That's a weird bit of information there. Anyway, moving on, we get within Hogwarts. This is the big Hogwarts set, the interior this time, talking about all the different rooms and everything. Some interesting information here. Moving on, we get the heads of the house. We got Snape, McGonagall, and Flitwick. There's an interesting note right here talking about how the heads of Slytherin, Gryffindor, and Ravenclaw houses appeared as Lego minifigures in 2018. Perhaps Professor Sprout, the head of Hufflepuff house, was busy repotting plants in her, green, in her greenhouse. I don't know why we haven't gotten Professor Sprout yet since uh, 2011. I hope we get her soon because I'd love to have her minifigure. Moving on. Here we get some General Hogwarts staff. We got Nearly Headless Nick, who should not be holding his head in his hand like that. He's nearly headless, not completely headless. He can't move his head. It's a bit of a problem in my book. Over here, we just get some more general staff and then a bit about each of them. Moving on, we come to Rubius Hagrid. Now, there's a what may be an error here, what may not be. Over here, the brick facts. Hagrid's shaggy mass of brown hair swamps his regular size minifigure head. His eyes peek out through the single hair, mustache, and beard piece, which isn't seen in any other character. I think they are trying to say that his hair piece is clearly exclusive to him, but the way it's phrased seems to imply that there's never been a hair and beard piece for a character before, which would be wrong, so we got this dwarf from The Hobbit here, who has what looks to be a very similar piece to Hagrid. They're prob it's probably not an error, I'm probably just reading too much into it, but it's just what I thought. There's a bit of information here about Hagrid's hut, and that's all for this page. Moving on, we have the Hogwarts grounds, they talk about the Forbidden Forest sets, the Whomping Willow, and then here, I thought this is really funny, we got a picture of the boat with a bit about the Great Lake, and then we have a little note here saying, Susan Bones sits in the back, which I thought was kind of rude, just, she sits in the back, like no one cares about her, like, kind of hurts. Moving on, that's all for that section, next we get the section for the Wizarding World. Up first is Diagon Alley, I was a little disappointed we didn't get a tease for the giant Diagon Alley set we're supposed to be getting this summer, or sometime next year. Instead, it's just a little information about the micro scale and the Ollivander figure. Moving on, we get some magical community figures. They talk about Lupin, Moody, Dobby, Sirius Black, Tonks, Fudge, and the Dementors. Over here, it's kind of weird. It says, Mad-Eye Moody works to protect the Wizarding World from dark forces, but even this expert has fallen victim to them. The dark wizard Barty Crouch Jr. has been known to impersonate Moody. I don't like that wording because he just kind of impersonated him once during Hogwarts, and, I don't know, known to impersonate mean, seems to imply that he does it more often than just once. Wasn't a fan of that wording. Moving on, all this is about the night bus. Nothing too interesting there, just facts about the set. Now we get some magical creatures. They talk about Buckbeak, who, I think this is so funny. Poor Buckbeak is a proud hippogriff who upset Draco Malfoy and has now been sentenced to death. It's a very cute way to put um, Draco Malfoy insulted and Buckbeak attacked him for it, but it works. Get a bit about the center, the centaur rather, sorry, Hungarian Horntail and Aragog. Pretty nice build. Moving on. We talk about the Triwizard Tournament here. This is incorrect now because we've seen the new advent calendar. It says the golden egg is exclusive to this set, which it was when this came out, but it's a little outdated now. Don't hold that against the book though. They couldn't have known. Moving on. We get information about the Triwizard contestants, minus Harry. So we get Fleur, Crumb, and Cedric. Then over here, they talk about the Bobaxon's carriage. I think I pronounced that right. Nothing too important there. Then they talk about the Yule Ball. We got the clock tower here, and then different facts about the Yule Ball aspect of the Traveler Tournament. 
Then we come to Lord Voldemort's page. They talk about his two minifigures. We got Tom Riddle, then his baby. And then they give a bit of information about the Rise of Voldemort graveyard set, one of my favorite, favorite Harry Potter sets. Moving on, we get Voldemort's followers. They talk about Quirrell, Bellatrix, Wormtail, generic Death Eaters, and Fenrir Greyback. Pretty cool information here. And that sums it up for this section. We're almost done. We're on Fantastic Beasts now. Moving on here, we get Newt Scamander. Talks about him. This is a new word, actually. Mazeologist. I was not familiar with that. Uh, there's a little bit of brick facts down here. And then information about the suitcase set, which is a pretty cool set, in my opinion. Moving on, they talk about the Fantastic Beasts aspect. We get all these different animals. The... Thunderbird, the Thestral, Akami, and Erumpet. Moving on, it gives general information about all of these characters. Now, there's another error on this page, right here for Sus uh, Separina Pickery. Definitely pronounced that wrong. Her hat, it says, hat is unique to this minifigure. It's not. In the Ninjago Gamers Market, on the hat racks, there is actually an identical hat that came right there. So that is wrong. She definitely did come, the hat definitely did come in another set. And then we get some information about Tina, Percival Graves, Credence, Queenie, and Jacob. Moving on, we get some information about Grindelwald's carriage, and then the Grindelwald minifigure himself. And that sums it up for the sets aspect of the book. Then we get this whole really cool behind the scenes part. There's some really cool you know, interviews with the team from behind the Lego Harry Potter, asking some questions. It's a pretty interesting stuff to read through. Moving on, there's talking about how they came up with the modular design for Hogwarts Castle, making the Hedwig that can fly, designing the stickers and building the actual castle. I love how they don't use the right color pieces when they're building it, they just grab whatever's at hand. And you have like black towers with green and yellow and red. <laughs> Looks very funny. And there's a nice picture here, let's see if I can zoom in on that for you. It's a prototype of the Quidditch set, which I think is really cool. They use um, different pieces for the hoops. They got the clear pieces to hold up the characters, and the towers look all sorts of different. Slytherin's actually missing the flag. Uh, other than that, there's not too much else, just more questions than a group photo. It's pretty cool. And that's it for that section. Then they get the character index. It's uh, four pages of characters, which is quite a lot. However, I'm a little disappointed in this book. I think it came out a tad bit too early, because we know about the second CMF series. We know about the advent calendar, and again, there was this set and none of those are included. I think I think for sure they should have included the accessory set, because they included the Bricktober pack, which was arguably harder to get than the accessory set. It wouldn't have been too hard to just add four more minifigures, right? But I would have also loved if we could get the second CMF series in here, and maybe even the second advent calendar, but it's not too much of a trouble. I'm sure they'll put it in the next book that comes out in three, four years. Moving on, we just get an index here, and that sums it up for the book. There's a nice picture in the back. And on the back, there's just some general pictures with some little information about what you can find inside. Overall, I love this book. It's great for information. It's great to look up stuff about Harry Potter. It's got some really nice visuals and really cool facts. There's just a couple of inaccuracies. There, there were probably a couple more that I missed or looked over, but there's always that kind of problem with these books, and I don't hold it against them. Really, no one who isn't, you know, crazy about Lego would notice them talking about like an, an exclusive hat or something. So overall, very good book. Definitely recommend it. The Tom Riddle figure was awesome. And that's all I have for you guys today. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a fantastic day.